We are continuing this momentum with Eva Love coming on here in just a minute, talking about attracting the right one for you. What are the secrets? And you'll be hearing about this woman's incredibly high success percentage of her clients finding that right one for for them. So stick around. This is proven stuff. So we're going to dive into that in just a sec. Before that, thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing to become your greatest possible self in all areas of life, in relationships, career, spirituality, health and wellness, all of it. Thank you for being here. Next up is our iTunes review of the week. This week, it is by Anthony A93, I believe. Yep. And Anthony A says, Chris, the man burns. Every podcast episode gets better and better. Not only that, you can tell how present and interested Chris is in each of the experts he brings on the show. Anthony, thank you so much for that review. If you want a chance to get shouted out on a future 12-hour live stream like Anthony did today, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search Greatest Possible Self on the Apple Podcast Store. Give us a review there. Let us know what you love, what you want to see more of, and how we can improve the show for you. Thank you in advance for doing that. I'm going to read and uh, introduce Eva's intro in just a second here. Before that, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes. This is going to be a power-packed interview, and you definitely want to stick around all the way through to the end because one idea has the power to change everything for you. In 1989, Eva had a profound spiritual experience where she was given a series of techniques that transformed her life within three weeks. Everyone around her wanted to have the same experience, and that launched her into teaching and working with clients, leaving her high-powered corporate position. Using these tools, she attracted the love of her life. They've been married for 25 enchanting years, and over 87% of Eva's single clients are either married or in a committed relationship within 12 months. In 30 years, Eva has worked with over 8,500 clients, and we are blessed to have Eva's wisdom with us here today. Eva, are you ready to rock the house? I am. All right, we're live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Eva, thank you so much for being here, and we are going to dive right into the theme of today, which is communication, dating, and romance. What does that mean for you? Well, for me, it means bringing your greatest self, which is the perfect entree into what we're talking about today. Um, you know, a lot of people think that it's the opposite sex that holds the cards. So mm. a man might think, well, the woman holds all the cards and a woman might think, well, the man holds on the cards. And the truth is you hold all the cards. Yeah. yeah. And so learning how to be and bring the person that you are, yeah. who, who you really are, and not trying to be what you think they want you to be. That's mm. a big mistake. Mm. I see that all the time. Yeah. And I see the, the devastating results of it in couples who come to me and say, you know, we just can't make this work. Mm. And it was like, well, you I mean, I don't say this to them, but <laughs> I'm thinking you should have never gotten married in the first place because right. you're not matched. Not compatible. You're not mm -hmm. the right person for each other. Right. I, I believe that 90% of divorces mm. are caused by selection error. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you know, and I did it twice, so I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's so great, though. I think like you want to win before you begin, right? And so the best way to do that is to be clear on who you are, what your values are, what you stand for, what you don't stand for, and to be able to communicate that with a significant other or potential significant other so that you could avoid those yes. those things that would come up later on down the road. That's right. Because just think about this. If somebody portrays themselves one way mm. and they're really not that way, then when they find out who you really are, yeah. they feel betrayed, mm. you know, wow. and, and they might stick around, but then the trust goes away. Yeah. And my experience in doing this for over 30 years, that trust is at the basis of all love. Mm. And once trust is broken, the love has a hard time remaining. Yeah. You can still love someone when the trust has been broken, but it's not, it's, it's, it's challenging. 
Yeah, it's it, very it, it really it really takes a willingness to go into the foundation and kind of excavate that and over time, right? Because it's yeah. it's something that you get to keep repairing through behavior, right. through behavior and the way you make someone feel safe, right? right? And and That's commitment right. to that over That's over time. Because right. just yeah. one one incident of of distrust can take like years to, to repair. Years. You know? I know. And people don't realize that. And they mm. think, oh, well, why doesn't she just get over it? Or why doesn't he just get over it? Mm. But it's not like that. Mm. That's not the way trust works. Mm. And um, so, you know, one of the things that I see women doing, and I work mostly with women, I work sure. with men also, but I work a lot with women. Yeah. And one of the things that I see women doing that really is, uh, is a bad way to start mm -hmm. is they start with a list of what they want to, to attract. Uh -huh. And a lot of a relationship coaches will tell you to do that. Mm -hmm. Make a list. Mm -hmm. And I say, throw your list away. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a list, then that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And you want that person to be the thing you want. And so you're going to start projecting onto that person what you want to see. Wow. And when you do that, what happens is they're not that at all. They never represented themselves to be that, but your mind is what is what you're, you know, in your mind, that's what they are. Yeah. And I hear it all the time. Oh, we have so much in common. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're telling me these things and I'm going, yeah, well, you know, what are his values? Yes. What are his values? Mm -hmm. Not, you know, what incidental things you might have in common, but, you know, how does he, how does he respond mm. to you? Mm. How does he, you know, what does he do? Because here's the thing, yeah. what anyone says is just what they say. Right. Maybe yeah. it's true. Maybe it isn't. Maybe they want it to be true, but it's really not. Mm. But what they do is what you can believe. Yeah. And so if a guy or a girl says, well, I'll call you or I'll do such and such, and then they don't. Mm. Oh, okay. So they don't do what they say. Mm. Right? Mm. Got to have integrity. Let's, let's like foundational. <laughs> foundational. Yeah. Remember that thing about trust? Trust yeah. is at the bottom of it all. Mm will look over that and they'll go oh well and they'll see all kinds of red flags but they don't want to see them and so they'll ignore them i i mean and i know this is true because i did my well both my first and second husband i saw all kinds of red flags mm. and and i ignored them and i see this all the time happen is that when when you see a red flag and you ignore it because you think well nobody's perfect well, nobody is perfect, hmm. but when you see a red flag, you need to pay attention. Yep. And so what I tell my clients is you be the objective observer. Hmm. Hmm. You step back and let the guy show you who he is and you just observe. Don't be falling in love with this guy until you see who he is. Hmm. So one of the things that makes women want to fall in love fast with a guy mm -hmm. and a lot of them do it is, and it's not really love. It's really just attachment. Yeah. Is there lonely? Mm. They want a relationship so bad, especially my clients. My clients are usually over 40 mm -hmm. and you know, they're divorced or they're, they're widowed or them. Some of them have never married yeah. and, and they, they really feel, you know, like I got to do this now. I'm not getting any younger. Right. And I can tell you that that feeling is a killer. Mm -hmm. It will get you into a relationship that is just about sure to be doomed. Wow. And I don't want to scare anyone, but, but what I do is I work with my clients to teach them how to not feel that, how to yeah. let go of that and, mm. and build the, the sense of self yeah. to understand that they are plenty. 
that yes. there's nothing wrong with them. There's no, like a lot of, you know, we all have our quirks, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of women think, oh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a great pick, right? Because mm. I don't look like the models and I'm, mm. you know, I'm not a size six and I'm, or a four or a two or a one, whatever they think they're supposed to be. Right. And, right. you know, I don't have gorgeous hair. I don't have, you know, whatever it is they think they're supposed to have. Sure. And so what I want to say to them is, no, no, who you are is enough. Mm. And the perfect man for you or if it's a man the perfect yeah. woman for you is there you don't have to be something else or or you know settle mm -hmm. for what you don't want now when i hear women talk about oh they want a guy that's six foot tall mm -hmm. dark you know handsome what i know is that they're looking at the wrong thing yeah and especially the cute ones you know the really good looking women yeah. They think they have to have this really good looking man mm. to be the right one for them. Okay. Now, I am married to a really good looking man, but I knew that that wasn't what it was about mm. because I had been married to two good looking men. Yeah. And I knew that that wasn't what what was going to make my marriage work. Wow. What I knew was that a man who was kind, mm. who was understanding, who had empathy, who who wanted to make me happy. I mean, that's one of the keys for a woman to know if she should continue a date, dating a guy is does he want to make her happy? Does he really care about her feelings? Or is he always telling her, oh, calm down or, you know, don't get so excited or whatever. If he's mm -hmm, doing that. Mm -hmm. Don't be too much. <laughs> yeah, don't be too much. Right. If you think you have to make yourself less, yeah. to satisfy him he's yeah. the wrong one like my first husband used to tell me i hate your laugh don't laugh wow and so i stopped laughing mm. and after i divorced him i thought that's crazy that is crazy that <laughs> is crazy because that is something i love i love to laugh yeah and my current husband that i've been married to for 25 years and yes. just am still just so in love with this man. He's, he's just amazing. Hmm. And I feel so blessed that we're together and he feels that way too. And, you know, when we started, he said, Oh, I just love your laugh. Hmm. And I'm like, Oh, okay. This is a good sign. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And he, he loves who I am, yeah. the woman that I am. He loves how strong I am. Yes. He loves, you know, that I'm not a shrinking violet, you know, mm. he, he loves that about me. Yeah. And if you're a shrinking violet, then you've got to find a man. You, you've got to attract a man who wants that kind of quiet, you know, demure woman. Right. Who feels so, like, who feels like he, the best of him comes out when he gets to be the, the, you know, knight in shining armor and rescue the damsel in distress. And like, if that's what fulfills him, if that's what his archetype, you know, and soul desires and feels great, then like, there's a man out there for that woman who that's likes right. to be the damsel that's in right. distress. <laughs> that's right. And you see, the thing about it is, and, and you just said something that reminds me of one of the things that I teach my clients. And that is that, what makes a man want to be with you? Mm. What attracts him is how he feels when he's with you. Mm. It doesn't matter how much you love him mm. or how much he loves you. What really matters, what's really important is how he feels when he's with you. Mm. Because if you make him feel like a man, like, he feels oh, good yeah. about himself. Oh yeah. He's going to want to be with you. Yep. But if he feels less than or uh suppressed by you, yeah. he's not going to want to be with you. Mm -hmm. And if a man doesn't want to be with you because here's the deal. When you're married, you spend a lot of time together. Yep. You know? You're with each other in the morning, in the, in the, in the evenings, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're, you're doing life together. Yep. And if you don't enjoy being with that person, mm. it's going to be a bummer. 
be friends first. Yeah. <laughs> well, and be and like each other. One yes, of the things yes. that I knew right away about my husband and I is yeah. that we really enjoy being together. Yeah. And we love our life together. Yeah. And we still do. Yeah. We still enjoy talking to each other. We still dis- enjoy discussing issues and ideas. I mean, a lot of times what happens to couples is they quit communicating mm. and they stop realizing that their their whole life and their whole love life is a, is around their communication. Yeah. And so if they don't communicate, mm-hmm. you know, how are they going to be together? How are they going to enjoy being with each other? Yeah. And it's also, it's also like a willingness to insert ourselves into the conversation, whether man or woman, like saying, Hey, this is what I stand for. Like it, it can be even difficult as, as we kind of go through our relationship and we get into this comfortable groove. And even for me, I've noticed there's been times where at the beginning of my relationship with Petia, like I would have more tough conversations and like there was like more of a willingness to explore and experiment and to test the boundaries and to see like, you know, where, where are we in our relationship? What are we creating? And yeah. over time, it's just been like, okay, well, we kind of know what to, to expect or what to anticipate or what the boundaries are and it's still the communication of checking in and asking like you know hey what what, remind me again what what do you like what what is important to you in our relationship what is important to you in our sex life like what what do you like when when we're in the bedroom like asking those kinds of questions is so important but you know most couples don't do that no i mean (laughs) they don't do that at all (laughs) so so here's the thing yeah Another big mistake that single women make, particularly single women, Mm. is that they don't speak up in the beginning of the relationship because they don't want to rock the boat. Mm. And so he brings them flowers and, oh, they act all wonderful about them. But the truth is they don't like those kind of flowers. Like, you know, the first time Will brought me flowers, they had stargazer lilies in them and I'm allergic to them. Mm. so after he left i quietly took them to the garbage put them out and then the next time we were at the grocery store yes. i showed him the kind of flowers that i love yes i, I, see, I really a lot of women appreciated don't... those last flowers and you know what are my favorite flowers exactly <laughs> exactly so so if you want your man to to do the things for you that you want yeah. you have to know you mm. have to be able to tell him in a way that mm. he can hear so what happens is a lot of women, they drop hints mm-hmm. and they, 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 you know, they think that the husband is like they are. So mind, women mind sense, <laughs> we are, right. Women <laughs> sense from each other what they want yeah. and they can tell, like mm-hmm. I can tell, you know, if, if a woman is needing something, you know, right. I can tell mm-hmm. that, you know, she needs a hug or she needs something, whatever it is. And, and, uh, and I'll ask, you know, mm-hmm. do you need a hug or do you, you know, what do you need? Uh, or I'll confirm, you know, it seems like you just need to rest and it takes, it takes some care of yourself, take mm-hmm. care of yourself. So, but men don't do that. Mm-hmm. They don't have that, that, you know, intuitive thing. Men are more physically oriented. Women are more relationship oriented. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying this to be sexist. I'm saying this because women are hardwired this way yep. and men are hardwired that way. Now, we're all on a continuum yep. between the masculine and the feminine. And there are some men that are way more feminine. And I don't mean effeminate. Mm. I mean, they have a lot more of those nurturing qualities yep. because of the way they were raised or just because of their hardwiring. Mm. But for the most part, if you took 100 men and 100 women and put them in a room and you interviewed them all, men would be more physically oriented. Yep. They they see things women don't see. They know everything that's going on around them because that's their protective spirit. Mm. Whereas a woman is more internal. She's experiencing the world through her feelings. Mm. And she is not so much aware of what's going on around her. Mm. Like if you ask a man, you know, what was down that alley? He could probably tell you. And you and they if a woman and a man just walk by, woman probably not. Mm. Okay, because he's so physically oriented. Funny. But she could tell you 
what the person was wearing that they just passed on the street and he probably couldn't. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Or she could tell that that woman was upset mm. when she walked by. Yeah. And the man probably couldn't. Yeah, so what, I'm not what, trying what to make saying. generalities or, or pigeonhole mm. someone, but I'm just saying as a general rule, these are the truth about how men and women work. Yeah. So if a woman doesn't, share with a man what really makes her happy. And you see, most healthy men really want to make their woman happy. Yep. That's their greatest goal yep. is to put a smile on her face. Yep. And most women don't understand this. Mm -hmm. And they think if they ask for something, they're being demanding or they're being um, uh, high maintenance. That's the word. Mm -hmm. Because some guy told her that she was high maintenance and it was a it was not a compliment. And so then she thought, OK, well, I shouldn't ask for anything because if I do, I'm going to be considered high maintenance. Well, what I tell my clients is be high maintenance, because the more you let your man know, the more he can produce for you. Mm. And that makes him feel like more of a man. Yep. And it makes him feel good about himself. Yeah. And when he sees your face is happy and smiling, mm -hmm. he's going to be thrilled. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I want to dive into that a little bit more. I've heard it like demanding or think I'm asking too much, right? Yeah. I think a lot of women might say, am, am I asking for too much in this guy that I'm looking for? In terms of being um, the, the high maintenance and being demanding, can we dive into like what that might look like in a, well, in a relationship? Yeah, being high maintenance is not being demanding. Okay. 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 So one of the things that women do is they'll tell a guy what they want and how to do it. Sure. No. <laughs> no. That's not wrong. <laughs> so what you do in order to have a man respond to you is you tell him what you would love. Mm. You tell him what would make you happy. Oh, honey, it would make me so happy if we could go, you know, to Hawaii. Mm. Or I would just love to go to, matter of fact, <laughs> Will's first Christmas present to me was a trip to Hawaii. Ooh. And I know it was because we were talking about it. And I was like, oh, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. I've never been. Yeah. And he was like, oh, my gosh, you've never been to Hawaii. And I'm like, no. And I've always wanted to go. And so the Christmas, that's what I got. Boom. Because <laughs> it would make me happy. Yes. And he listened. And he wanted to make me happy. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, oh, he's responding mm. to my requests. Yeah. He wants to know what makes me happy, what mm. I would love. And so what happened is one of the ways that a woman knows if she's with the right one mm. is that he responds to her. He wants to give her what she wants mm -hmm. if she asks for it in a way that he can receive. Mm -hmm. So part of asking means that you trust the universe to deliver for you and you know that it doesn't have to come from him. Yeah. You're just putting it out there Yeah, and wow. he can do it or not do it. And it's okay because if you say, if you don't do this for me, I'm going to be mad. Mm. Now it's a demand. Yeah. Or even if you don't say it, if you mm. act like it, mm. he's he's not interested. Mm. He'll back off. Right. So these women who say, well, if you don't marry me by this time, you know, I'm out of here. Well, that's not good. That's not <laughs> a good, that's not a that's not a proposal he can accept. Right. So if you say, you know, what I see in our future mm. is, you know living in a beautiful, you know, maybe living on the beach and you describe your, your vision of yeah. the future. And if he loves you, he'll buy into that vision, even if it's not, it wasn't what he really thought. Yep. But the more specific you can be about mm. your vision, the more details you can give him, the more visually stimulating your vision is for him. Wow then he's going to buy into that. He's going to want that too. I had a client who she was married to this guy and um, she said she wanted to move to San Diego and they were living in Northern California. 
because uh-huh. it was just too cold up there for her. She needed more warmth. Mm-hmm. And so he said, absolutely not. No way. I'm ever going to do that. And so she said, OK, well, whatever. You know, she wasn't pushy about it. She wasn't demanding. She just said, I know I trust you that you'll do the right thing. But she just kept talking about Southern California and all the things she loved about it. And all, you know, she just, I mean, not in a mean way, not in a, right. not in a pushy way, but just, it was what excited her. Yeah. And within six months, they were living in Southern California. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that inspired him. What you want to do is inspire your man, mm. not make him feel like he's, you know, like you hear men talk about the ball and chain. Mm. Well, that's because those women don't know how to be with a man and let him be who he is wow. and allow him to respond to you. One of the things that I always say is that uh, it's so much better and your relationship will last forever if you use the magic touch with your man, not a jackhammer. Because a lot of women will use a jackhammer and it mm-hmm. doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And then they're miserable and then he's miserable and they think it's his fault. Mm-hmm. And they think it's if he would just do the things that you asked for him, then you'd be happy. But you don't know how to talk to him. Mm-hmm. And this happens with women in dating too, because they don't know how to respond or how to you know, lift a guy up and inspire him to be the man that you want him to be. Like I had a client who was dating this guy and he didn't make very much money. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, you know, he was a a grocery clerk at Trader Joe's Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's not, not a bad living, but it wasn't to the standard that she was used to living in. And so he was really interested in her, but he said, you know, is this going to cause us to have a problem because I don't make enough money? The last girl that I dated broke up with me because I don't make enough money. Mm. And she said, no, she said, uh, you know, if this is meant to be, you'll, your income will go up. Mm. And that's exactly what happens when a woman has desires, she will inspire her man. And within six months, he was um, assistant manager. And then later was, um, you know, to a store manager, but, but, they didn't end up making it together, but you know, her, her current husband is, has more than doubled his income since they got married five wow. years ago. Wow. And he was making a good living then. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I love that just by being that feminine loving presence yes. in a man's yes. life, it like calls forth the man to be the best man he can be. And especially yes. if, if like earning extra resources, extra yes. financial abundance for the family will make a difference. You know, I yes. know my, my girlfriend Petya, she's always like affirming how much like I'm I'm standing for my family and, and for our family, yes. for you know, our, our future kids and things like that. She just keeps reaffirming I'm like, you know, you know the way to my heart, girl. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. And and you know, and it's not just about being nicey nice or right. you know, I mean a lot of women think about feminine as being weak. No. There's nothing weak about being feminine. Nope. Being feminine is just allowing that nature, that natural nature that you have out. Now, here's one of the other problems that a lot of women use or a lot of women do that causes them to not get into a relationship. I work with a lot of really high powered women. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they've learned because they've, they've, gone up most of them have gone up the ranks right you know they didn't come in as ceo you know right. <laughs> they came in as you know whatever and then they worked their way up mm-hmm. or they started a business and of course it was just them and then they hired a few people and you know they built it yeah uh, there's not many women that just get put into that position all of a sudden right but here they have used these masculine traits qualities you know the leadership qualities that they felt like they had to have and a lot of masculine qualities Mm -hmm. and then they try to take that skill set over into the relationship area and it doesn't work it doesn't work at all Mm -hmm. and so what I tell them is first of all a woman who's naturally using her feminine powers 
will be a much better leader than a woman who's using masculine powers. Mm, wow. And so one of the things I do is I work with my clients to help them develop their mm -hmm. femininity. I had to do that because I was, you know, I had a very high position in a major corporation yeah. and I had to learn how to bring out my feminine yeah. because I had, you know, I've been, I had been a single mom, been the breadwinner, you know, had to be the mom and the dad and, and it's hard. Mm. No question. It's hard. But when I allowed my feminine nature to come out mm -hmm. and then I could attract a man who matched mm. my desires and what I wanted in a man. Mm. So like one of the things that was really important to me was a man who had faith, not mm. religious, but right. faith. And I remember one day praying, saying, God, is there a man? Because I would meet these guys and they'd be really powerful and strong and, you know, really, you know, successful. Yeah. And, you know, at my level, and, yeah. you know, and but they would have no spirituality at all. Mm. Or I would meet these really spiritual guys, but they were, you know, like beach bums or something, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And I would be like, no, <laughs> this is not what I want. <laughs> And so what I would do is I would, you know, I would try to help the ones that weren't spiritual bring out their spirituality, mm -hmm. but that didn't really work. Yeah. Or I would try to help the ones that were not successful be successful, yeah. but that didn't really work either. Nope. And so I was just like, oh, one day I was just in prayer. I was like, God, you know, can you bring me a man who has both the success and the spirituality? And, and what I heard was, well, of course, I made you, didn't I? Mm. And I, I was like, oh, right. There is my, my mate is out there waiting for me. Yeah. And so that calmed me down. <laughs> <laughs> Gave you some reassurance. <laughs> because you see, the thing is that we think that whoever we are, however we are, whatever quirks we have, whatever differences we think we are from what we should be, that isn't the truth. Mm. The truth is we are magnificent beings just mm. the way we are. Mm. And, and being able to own that, yeah. really own it. And it takes work yep. because we've been trained from the time we were children to that, you know, we were criticized and put down and, and told we weren't enough or told that, you know, we weren't going to be successful or whatever yeah. we were told, yeah. you know, you'll never get a man. Yeah. You know, my dad used to tell me that you'll never get a man. Well, I got a lot of them, but most of them were not the right ones for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the truth is that when you're who you really are, and that means getting rid of the beliefs that you have about yourself mm -hmm. that are wrong, yeah. that are not who you really are. So that work, that is inner work. That work is essential for mm. creating a relationship that will last. Mm. Because if you get offended at every little thing some guy says, when he doesn't mean to offend you and you can't let it go because mm. that's what your father said to you and you don't heal that hole in yourself, mm then finally the guy will go, this is too hard. Yep. I can't do this. Yeah. You know, I, I, I need, you know, I need a woman who, who has the confidence in herself. Yeah. I run a program called how to be loved. Like you've never been loved before. Mm -hmm. And we do this deep work where women really understand that these beliefs that they have about themselves and they, and they're able to let go of them. And replace them with healthy, whole, you know, beautiful feelings of themselves where they deeply love and appreciate themselves. Mm. And how can a man, see, here's the thing. A man wants a woman who loves herself enough that he can love her too. Because somehow men know that if the woman doesn't love herself, that she is, is she, he's not going to be able to feel it. And I'll, I'll mm -hmm. give you an example of that. When I was, oh, I don't know, 
I, it was about five years before I met my husband, four years before I met my husband. And I was dating this guy. We'd been dating about eight months. And I had been just this, this work that I'm doing now had just come to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I realized because I kept having problems with this guy. Of course, mm-hmm. I thought it was him. but <laughs> Who's the common denominator was- in all these relationships? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. And so I said, you know what? And it came to me really clearly mm-hmm. that all these problems I had to do had to do with my dad because mm-hmm. my dad and I had a terrible relationship. Mm-hmm. He beat me and he would scream at me and he was physically and emotionally abusive. And so I did some work using these tools that I'd gotten in this in this spiritual uh download that I got Mm -hmm. and I healed those until I felt loved inside of myself and I'd never felt loved I had actually never felt even my mother loved me and Mm -hmm. and she'd always been loving to me but I I didn't feel it Mm -hmm. because I had wired it as a child that if my father treated me that way I must not be lovable Mm -hmm. and so the next time I saw this boyfriend, I felt all this love from him. And I was like, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. And he said, I, I said, are you falling in love with me? And he looked at me just like I was crazy. And he said, Eva, I've loved you since we first met. I just. What in the world? <laughs> this happened again. <laughs> Eva is coming back in just a sec. Stay tuned. One sec, one sec. So fascinating. Open. Oh, there you are. We're back. <laughs> I was talking and all of a sudden you were gone. And I was like, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we're back. So you were saying that your your boyfriend was like, Eva, I've loved you since, what, what did you say before that? Well, that? he said, I've loved you ever since we first met. He said, I just, you know, everything about you, I just love it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and I had never felt it. And then I realized that the reason I'd never felt it was because I didn't love myself. Wow. And when I really loved myself, then I knew mm. that, I could be loved, really loved. And that was the thing I used to do is I used to make every guy I dated and every guy, you know, the last, and I'd been married twice and I was engaged four times. And all of those guys, I would make them jump through all kinds of hoops mm. to, to uh, prove to me that they loved me, yeah. which was terrible for them because here they were loving me, but I couldn't feel it and I didn't know it. So I couldn't, I couldn't, ex- I couldn't accept it. Wow. So a woman has to love herself. Yep. deeply and not just oh i'm a pretty woman you know or whatever superficial thing i mean love who she is at her soul oh yeah her heart yeah and who she is and that takes some work oh. because the conversation going on in women's minds and it goes on in men's too mm-hmm. is just mean mm-hmm. i mean oh women are so mean to themselves but it's what they learned how to do as a child Yep. And they're criticizing themselves. They're putting themselves down. They're going, oh, how stupid of me. Oh, that was, I'm so clumsy. Oh, I'm so whatever. You know, I'm so ugly or I'm so whatever. I'm so disgusting. Yeah. You know, I mean, I hear this conversation that these women have and I just think, oh my gosh, how, how you know, you, this conversation has got to change, yeah. but it's got to change from the inside. Mm-hmm. You can't just do affirmations. Mm. It's like putting an affirmation when you feel that way about yourself. It's like, putting a silk scarf on a rocky road and calling it smooth. It's not smooth. <laughs> You've just covered it up. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's like a, that. I was going to say, it's a beautiful like muscle and words to say when it's coming from a deep rooted, aligned, connected place. Yeah. But oftentimes people are not embodying what it means when they're right. saying those affirmations. Right. Yeah. Right. And I remember once before I had my spiritual uh, epiphany, yeah. 
I, I'd gone to one of these workshops, these self-help workshops, and, and the lady said, go home and, and look in the mirror and say, I love you. Yep. And so I went home and I looked in the mirror and I said, I love you. And then what I heard from inside was, I hate you. You're disgusting. Mm. And I was like, oh, my <laughs> gosh. I was just shocked. Oh I mean, literally, I yeah. was shocked. Yeah. And there were some other things that happened. And, and then when I got this, this, well, let me just tell you about what happened. Yeah. So after my second marriage, I, I walked in on him beating my 16 year old. Hmm. And I, I had a big corporate job and I was traveling a lot. And I'd come home early from work, hmm. which I never used to do. I used to stay late every night. Hmm. So nobody was expecting me. Hmm. And I came home and I hear my daughter screaming and I run into the library and there's my six foot four, 300 pound husband kicking my daughter with a size 17 shoe. Wow. And I just lost it hmm. because I promised myself that would never happen to my children. And so of course I divorced him, but in the meantime, I found out that we went to therapy and I found out that he had been beating them the whole four years we'd been married. Wow. And I just couldn't forgive myself. How could I have not known that this was going on? How could my daughters not have trusted me to come and talk to me about this? You know, cause he told them that if they told that they would just get in trouble again, how could, you know, how could this have happened? And I just felt like I didn't deserve to breathe the air. I was so depressed. I was so, I just cried and cried and cried mm. and I just couldn't get over it. And I had my younger daughter had run away and I sent my other daughter on a trip and I thought, you know, I should just, I should just not be on the planet anymore mm. because my kids would be so much better off without me. And of course that's the depression talking. That's not a logical Eva talking. This is, this is definitely a deep, depressed state and my brother had said that he would take my children and my sister-in-law loved my girls still do and um and i knew that they would have a wonderful home and i had lots of life insurance and i was going to drive to the top of a mountain and drive off a cliff mm -hmm. and i knew i'd never survive and there would be it would be double indemnity it'd be no no uh, uh suicide note it would just be you know everybody would think i had an accident and so there would be plenty of money and it would all be, everybody would live happily ever after, right? So I drive up to the top of the mountain and I'm coming down this, where I'm going to slide off because I used to be a race car driver. So I knew how to, you know, make, a, make it look good. And just as I'm approaching the curve where I'm going to drive off, I hear this voice and it says, Eva, don't do this. You're sick. It's like you've got the flu. You'll get over it. Mm. Stop the car. And I knew that voice. I hadn't heard it in a long time, but I knew that voice. And I went, oh, my God. And it kind of woke me up. And I was able to stop the car. And then I just completely lost it wow. because I realized what I almost had done. And I was just devastated. Mm -hmm. So. I went back then there was no cell phones. <laughs> I went to the nearest uh, phone booth yeah. and I called a therapist and this was on a Saturday and she was just getting ready to leave her office. And she said, well, you can make an appointment to see me on Monday. And I said, well, I almost killed myself. And she went, oh, okay, well, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> In that case. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I, I went to her and then I went to somebody else because I wasn't getting any results from her. Mm. And then I went to a different kind of therapist. And I did all kinds of different kinds of therapy. And over three years, I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, just shelling out money to anybody that said they'd help me. Mm. So I was miserable. Mm. And the more therapy I did, the more I realized how screwed up I really was. Yeah. And that was really devastating because, you know, you don't really know how screwed up you are until you start digging around Doing in there. The work, yeah. <laughs> and of course they don't really give you any solutions. They just think talking about it's going to help and it helps a little bit, but I wasn't getting any tools mm. to heal. Wow. And um, so I'd gone to all these workshops. I'd done all these 
you know, read all these books. Yeah. I'd gone to different spiritual practitioners and, and ministerial counselors. And I mean, I just really, like every minute I wasn't working, I was working on myself. Yeah. So that gives you any idea yeah. about how dedicated I was to getting out of this misery. Oh, yeah. And so one night I'm sitting alone at my house, I'm sitting in the living room and I was just in tears. I was just, I just didn't know what to do. I'd done everything that I knew how to do. I just felt hopeless. Hmm. And yet I knew I wasn't going to kill myself. I knew that wasn't an answer. And I just cried out, God help me. And in that moment, and if this hadn't, if this hadn't actually happened to me, I wouldn't have believed it because, mm. you know, you hear about these things, but, you know, but at that moment, the light came into this room I was sitting in, the warmth, this love. I mean, it was, I mean, I still get chills just when I describe it. It, it was so amazing. It was just, I was just like, okay, what do you want me to do? And what I heard was go to bed. I had to laugh because that was exactly what I needed to do. I was exhausted and it was late and I did need to go to bed. And the next morning I woke up and I started getting these techniques that I've been teaching since. And as I got these techniques, I began to use it on myself. So every minute of the day that I wasn't either working or, you know, dealing with family or whatever I had to do. I was working on myself hmm. and within three weeks, my life changed. I mean, it really changed yeah. and I was healing my relationships. I mean, I really, I had alienated just about all my family because I was so angry from being so miserable and I didn't know what to do about it. And anyway, so, so all of a sudden, instead of this woman who's like all the time, you know, with this dark cloud over her head, yes. I'm like got this effervescent bubbly thing coming out of me and I'm yes. happy and I'm yes. joyful and I'm and and I was like a different I'm like, you know, when they hear you hear people talk about being reborn, it was a, it was like that. I mean, I really felt like this is the new Eva. Yeah. This was the real thing right here. And um so my roommate came to me and she said, Eva. I don't know what you've been doing, but whatever it is, I want, I want it. I, I, you know, cause she, she'd been with me for about a year. She was divorced and not too happy and struggling dating and not, not having a good time and didn't like her job. And I mean, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So I taught this little group of women. Uh, she brought over a few friends and, and I taught them. I was like, okay, God, if you want me to teach this, teach me, show me how. Mm -hmm. So I did. And then um, I was about, I don't know, halfway through that week, I started getting calls from some of these women saying, when are you going to teach another class? You know, I want my sister to come. I want my best friend to come. I want my cousin to come, I, wow. you know? And I was like, okay, well, I'll teach another class on Saturday. And, and then pretty soon that, Saturday class was a Friday night, Saturday class. And then it was a Friday night, Saturday, Sunday class. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. so pretty soon I was, so anyway, it ended up being like, you know, about, I don't know how many total hours, but it was, you know, it, it was quite a bit that I, cause it, cause as I, as people would ask questions and I would answer them, yep. you know, because the stuff was just coming through me yep. and I would go, Oh, that I should include that. And yep. I would write it down and then, you know, add it on. So anyway, so it, it turned out to be a little bit more than a weekend class. And, and then I started teaching them, you know, like one night a week for six weeks, like mm -hmm. every Wednesday night for six weeks. Yeah. So I was teaching every night of the week, all weekend, doing private clients. I barely had time to go to work. And one, one morning I was, you know, waking up and the idea came to me, it's time for you to quit your job mm -hmm. and, you know, resign and do this full time. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I thought about it and I thought, oh, that's that's perfect, you know, because I love this. And that is, you know, pay, you know, it was good pay and yeah. prestige and all that. But it wasn't filling my heart. Right. And so I told everybody, I gave notice. Everybody thought I was nuts, <laughs> you know, to leave this really great job yeah. for something that was very uncertain. But I just felt like that was the right thing to do. And I did it. And I've been doing it 
ever since I've never had another job since. Wow. 30 yeah. years. That's that's so amazing. I love just the the track record as well that I mentioned in your intro. It's just like you're you're clearly doing your soul's work, your your life's purpose work, you know, and impacting so many people in the process. It's, it's really yeah. beautiful, Eva. Well, you know, when when I had a I uh, uh coach, you know, a business coach yeah. asked me, well, what's your track record? And I said, oh, I don't know. I'll have to look. So I wrote all my clients down and I wrote all their successes down. And, and then I gave them to him and he goes, Eva, do you realize that 87% of your single clients are either married or in a committed relationship within 12 months? And I went, oh, right. And he said, that's like a record nobody has. <laughs> it's marketing gold. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> So, yeah. So I love that. I mean, in fact, I just, my husband and I were just at a wedding last weekend yeah. of one of my clients wow. and I, you know, there's just nothing like it. It's mm. the best. It's just the best mm. to be able to have these amazing clients that come to me and, you know, and this woman hadn't, hadn't been married before and mm -hmm. she was, you know, hitting her forties and she was like, want to get married it's time children. <laughs> clock sticking <laughs> and so now that's that's happening wow. so wow. yeah that's, that's awesome congratulations I'm, I'm curious with the the women out there who are looking and seeking a relationship is there anything else you feel they they really need to know to to create that amazing relationship and uh, manifest it and then also keep it because you have a, a great track record yourself of keeping yeah. an amazing relationship yes yes well, you know, there's so many things I could say right now. True. One is, of course, be true to yourself. Yeah. You know, there's probably nothing more important than that, mm -hmm. especially during the dating process. If you don't, if you're not true to yourself, mm -hmm. you can't be true to anyone else. And um, if you don't let someone know who you really are and what you really want in life and you can't and you can't share your vision with them. Mm -hmm then there will be no going forward. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, when I teach, when I work with clients and I, I both teach and I work privately with clients, yeah. um, I start with where they are, you know, what's going on in their life and how they're, you know, how they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, what their patterns are. Because one of the things is that you've got to break these patterns. And one of the patterns that happens is, is the way women think about men. So I had one client who was, uh, she came to me and she said, all men are jerks. And I went, well, that's kind of an interesting belief. But she goes, well, you know, look, there's Ivan and there's Jerry and there's Bill and there's Bob and there's, you know, Luke. And I'm like, yeah, all those guys were jerks to you. But that doesn't mean all men are jerks. That, that means those men, that that's what you got from them. And I said, what if we change that belief and you created that the right man is wonderful and fabulous. And so she was like, okay, so we worked on that. We did mm -hmm. some inner work on it. So I'm mm -hmm. using the techniques that I have. And the next guy that she started dating was a really fabulous guy. Now, the thing is, he was, he was a fabulous guy. She realized that she really wasn't ready. Mm. And so we had to do some more work yeah. on her to mm. get her really ready for a relationship. Uh -huh. There was a lot of stuff about her that needed to be, you know, worked through sure. because she had a lot of resistance to marriage and mm. to just so many things. <laughs> and I find that's true that a lot of times women think they're ready, but they're not. Mm. I think it's it's life. Life. I think we want. We say we want things, and yes. we are. We say we're ready, and yeah. actually, what what are we really ready for? What are we willing to do to achieve that which we say we desire? And and that yeah. that willingness, that muscle, that feeling of deservingness. You know, like yeah. that that grows through yeah. effort and through investment of time and That's energy right. and doing the inner work and all that great stuff. That's right. So anyway, so we did that and then she got married, but not, not to this first guy that she it was like the most fabulous guy she'd never dated. I mean, he really was a great guy. Yeah. 
And he later went on and married someone else. But anyway, so I would say that, you know, doing this inner work is really important to get Mm. you ready for attracting the right guy. Because first of all, until you do that inner work, you're probably not going to attract the right one. You'll keep attracting your wounds. Mm -hmm. And you've heard that before, mm. you know. But, but and, say, it, say it again for the people in the back here. <laughs> <laughs> if you keep attracting the wrong one, it's because you keep attracting your wounds. Yes. <laughs> so we want to heal those wounds so that you can be happily married and happily married for the rest of your life. Like mm. one of the things that I work with my clients on is how to grow a relationship that will last a lifetime where the love and chemistry. So like my husband, I still have great chemistry, Hmm. you know, and a lot of times, well, as a matter of fact, psychologists and, and psychologists will tell you that, uh, the chemistry dies. Don't expect that to stay alive. And I'm Hmm. just like, they just don't know how to keep it alive. That's Get out of here. I don't need your (laughs) BS diagnosis. I create my reality. I create my relationship. But you know, if you know how to keep, Yes, you know, it's, yes. I'm not saying that it, you just keep it alive no, because you a wish or a hope or airy fairy. There's, there's things you do that yep. keep it alive. Yep. There's ways of being yep. that keep it alive, that yep. keep you uh, being attracted to your man. A lot right. of times men lose interest because the woman has lost her self mm-hmm. in the relationship. This is a thing that happens all the time. Yeah. The woman just, the man wants this. And so she says, okay, I'll be that. Mm. And then she becomes less of who she is. Mm. And then he wants that. And then she Mm. says, okay, well, I'll be that. And then pretty soon she's gone. She's, you know, she's her, herself is this big, you know, little. And so by being who you are and not giving it up, but on the other hand, helping him see and helping him understand what he has. Yes. You know, part of the, and it's not bragging or it's not being, but it's, it's the way, it's the way you are being. Yes. So in the beingness is really the attraction, Mm. Mm. you know, like a woman who is naturally happy Mm. is really attractive. Now, some women are not naturally happy, Mm -hmm. you know, they kind of walk around with a chip on their shoulder or they kind of walk around you know, thinking about everything that's wrong. Yep. Well, that's that's a beingness that's not going to produce a happy life. That's right. And so I work with those women and help them bring out that natural feminine joy. I love it. Because joy is a natural feminine quality. Yeah. And Eva, this is a perfect, beautiful segue to let our audience know. How do they stay connected with you? Can you mention some of those different programs that you were talking about? They sound wonderful. How do they get involved? How do they contact you? Okay. So I have a free gift for your audience. So it's called the 10 myths Mm -hmm. that women have about men and how to bust them. Because here's the thing, if you have a belief about men, like the one about men are all jerks, Mm -hmm. then you're going to attract jerks. Yep. You're going to get what you believe. Mm -hmm. And so what, this is free, you know, just go to evalove.net forward slash 10 dash myths, M-Y-T-H-S, Eva, E-V-A-L-O-V-E dot net, N-E-T forward slash 10 dash and a 10 is one zero, one zero dash not myths. a t-e-n one yep. zero dash myths yep m-y-t-h-s so you can get my free gift then if you're interested in the how to be loved like you've never been loved before i'm going to be starting another one uh in may okay and so uh you can get to read about that and i don't think the new dates are up yet but i'll get them up soon and um, so it's evalove.net, same E V A L O V E dot net N E T forward slash how to be loved 2020. And it's a dash between each word, how to be loved 2020. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Wow. 
Uh, Eva, this is this is amazing. I just love the the light that you're sharing in the world and the results that you're providing for your clients and just you are you are aligned with your mission. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here and for this thank gift you. and for the blessing that you are in people's lives. You're literally literally changing destinies, and I can I can just imagine all the people who would have been suffering if you had driven off that cliff, right? And, yeah, and yeah, the, and, and I, I mean healing. to think of. To think of what that would have done to my children just horrifies yeah. me. I mean, just and just the the course, healing I, though that you were able to bring forth yeah. and and just beyond beyond your kids, like yeah, that would impact their yeah. lives. But the the legacy, yeah. the generations well, that you're changing. And, and you know what? It, mm. A big part of me wanting to to heal this yeah. was so I could show my children yes. how a beautiful because they'd never seen a good relationship. They'd just mm. seen broken relationships. Mm bad relationships. And so I wanted to show them. And, and today, both of my children are happily married. Aww. And Aww. I have a little grandson. What a what a legacy that you are, are <laughs> leaving. Eva, you're such a superstar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Chris. It has just been such a joy to speak with you. And you two are such a light. And, uh, and I love what you're doing. And I love you helping people be their great self. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Have an amazing rest of your day and keep shining okay. your light, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.